Imagine making millions to play alongside your best friend. That's the fortunate reality for some NBA players. And man, do we all wish it was ours. We all knew about LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, but some of the friendships of today's NBA are a little more low key. So welcome to NBA Zone, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at these friendships and going over 10 NBA players that you may not have known were friends. Before we do that though, make sure you guys are subscribed to our channel and that you have your notifications turned on so that you don't miss out on a single video. Now, let's get started. First up, we have Boban Marjanovic and Tobias Harris. Over a span of three years, two trades, and 765 minutes, Boban Marjanovic and Tobias Harris developed one of the more genuine friendships in the entire league. Hell, they even had their own nickname, that being Boby and Toby. The two began playing together on the Detroit Pistons. Then they would be traded together to the Clippers and then again to the 76ers. After half a season with the 76ers last year, they would part ways this last offseason. But that wouldn't keep the two from being great friends. Boby is always going to be Boby, but for me, like when he had called me and basically told me like the teams that he was interested in, I was excited for him. And then like an hour later, I was like, I I'm really losing my best friend though yes. that I play Aww. with. So, but I was I was happy he got in a good situation. Dallas gonna be a great team for him. Boban and Tobias claim that they still text each other often to see how one another is doing. Harris says that he keeps his eyes on Boban and his playing time, while Boban is always checking in on how Harris is playing. When they first came together in Detroit, they were pretty decent friends. But at the end of the day, they would go home to their families and wouldn't spend any real time together outside of basketball. That would change when they were traded to the Clippers. The two were being sent to an ecosystem they were unfamiliar with, so at the time, they only had each other. And it would branch into the friendship we have today. Next up, we have Kevin Durant and Michael Beasley. Michael Beasley and Kevin Durant both grew up in Prince George's County, Maryland. They would begin to grow familiar with each other around the age of 10 years old. They both played on the same AAU team and the same high school team. They both went to Big 12 schools, they both were named the conference players of the year as freshmen, and they both were number two picks in back-to-back -back NBA drafts. It's almost crazy how similar these guys' upbringings were. Obviously, their NBA careers have gone in two very different paths. KD has won an NBA championship and a league MVP while B.E.Z. has struggled to find stable success in his career, playing for seven different NBA teams along with two separate stints in China. Growing up, they would spend a lot of time together at their local rec center playing ball. This would spark their friendship and eventually it would morph into the kind of friendship almost all kids experience. KD was my real, like he was my first real friend, like, like sleepovers, like he was the first time I ever brought my Xbox out the house. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have Kyrie Irving and Harrison Barnes. Irving and Barnes are such good friends that Irving was actually a groomsman in Barnes's wedding. When asked, Barnes said that him and Kyrie's relationship dates all the way back to their sophomore year of high school. It all started at a top 100 camp that year. On a day of the camp, where Barnes and Irving were both having a rough day, not playing up to the level they had hoped, so they moped about their poor play together, sparking the beginning of their friendship. They've apparently been close ever since, and Barnes considers Irving to be like a brother to him. Next, we have Donovan Mitchell and Royce O'Neal. Mitchell and O'Neal both came into the NBA during the 2017 offseason. Their paths would be very different though. Mitchell was a highly touted prospect coming out of Louisville and would be taken with the 13th pick in the draft. Royce O'Neal, on the other hand, started out at a smaller college in Denver, transferred to Baylor, went undrafted, played overseas, then when he finally got his chance in the NBA, he made the most of it. Regardless, they would both enter their first year in the league in 2017, and they would build a bond during their rookie seasons. They even lived on the same floor in the same exact apartment complex during that year. You couldn't find one without the other. They've been close ever since, and they both seem to have high praises for one another's work ethic. Next, we have Tyler Eulis and Devin Booker. You're all most likely familiar with Devin Booker, and if you're not, then I'm not sure what you're doing on this video, but some of you may not actually be familiar with Tyler Eulis. Well, Booker and Eulis were both top prospects coming out of high school. They had played ball with each other ever since middle school, and they would stick together for a very long time. Through middle school, high school, then at Kentucky, and then both of them to the Phoenix Suns. When asked about their friendship, Devin Booker said, quote, it's greater than basketball, me and Tyler. 
he's one of my closest friends. Through the years, Booker says that they would work out every night around midnight, playing one-on-one -on -one and training late into the night. Until 2018, the two still spent most of their time together outside of the court. Most nights, the two would head over to Booker's house to play 2K, compete in ping pong, and eat together from their shared personal chef. Next, we have Ben Simmons and Dante Exum. Simmons and Exum are Australian and grew up near Melbourne. The two met when they were around eight years old and have been friends ever since. Both of their fathers played for the same professional league in the Australian NBL. Ben's father, David Simmons, was an NBL all-star who played primarily for the Melbourne Tigers. Dante's father, Cecil Exum, was drafted by the Denver Nuggets in the 1984 NBA Draft and spent seven years playing for several NBL teams between 1989 and 1996. The Suns grew up playing basketball together in the backyard. The two also played together for Team Australia in the 2012 FIBA Under-17 World Championship. Oh, and they also fancy themselves in a bit of Call of Duty, as seen in this absolutely legendary photo. Next, we have Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. By the time DeMar DeRozan had gotten to the NBA, Kyle Lowry was in his fourth year in the league, and this was just about the time when Lowry was about to make a name for himself. DeRozan was a clear up-and-coming talent in Toronto, and Lowry was becoming a vet in Houston. This would all change in the 2012 offseason, when Lowry would be traded to the Raptors, where DeRozan had been putting up great numbers through his first few years in the league. So, what sparked this friendship? Well, nothing in particular, really. The two would get the best out of each other in practice and off the court by pushing one another to their limits. They both had the same aspirations, and that was to win an NBA championship. So their like-minded wants and goals would create a bond between the two that still can't be broken today, even though they are separated by a great distance after DeRozan would be traded back in the 2018 offseason. It's not like I gotta have the mindset to go out there and, you know, I gotta score 30, 40 points. Um, I go out there and play aggressive. Just 37, what you mean? I didn't go out there saying, let me score 30 but, tonight. But like, I'm saying, you had 37. Don't say it like But I'm saying, I didn't go out there but saying. But all I'm saying, I, you can't say that when you had 37. Listen, what I'm trying to explain, though, bro. I understand. No, you don't. Let me finish. I didn't even. Leave. Next, we have Evan Fournier and Rudy Gobert. To throw in a little current events, just recently, Rudy Gobert tested positive for the novel coronavirus. Who was one of the first people to call him? Evan Fournier. Growing up in France and becoming some of the top prospects from there, Evan and Rudy spent a lot of time together through basketball. So, when they came to a new country in the US, they leaned on one another and their familiarity with each other to get them through those initial years. The two don't play on the same team, but I feel that there's definitely a chance of it in the future. And if they do, I'm sure we'll see the friendship come even more to life. Now finally, we have Steven Adams and Ennis Cantor. It would start with the two bigs helping each other improve as players. Going at it in practice and training together, it would spark the beginning of the friendship. Then, it would progress into a brotherhood through their similar personalities. Welcome to our home. Roomies! Woo! Ennis, so what's the one thing we love more than our moustaches? Puppies? This bromance was by no means artificial either. They're both international players, both almost seven feet tall, and both share similar sense of humor. When together on the Thunder, they would often come together for media sessions where they would crack jokes about one another and their teammates. They would also spend much time together off the court as well. Today, Cantor plays for the Celtics while Adams still resides in OKC, but that doesn't keep them from hanging around each other when they visit their respective cities. So that's gonna do it for today's video. What do you guys think of these friendships and do they remind you of yours in any way? Let us know down in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you drop a like and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.